I stretch my hand over you and transfer the power of healing to heal your eyes in Jesus' name. When you declared healing, I can now see with my left eye. Please help me walk. At least run. I've never run. I don't know. Please, daddy, I need your help. When I came here, I was not God. They were holding me and the voice was not coming out. I they were was... holding you? Yes, Papa. Papa got problem. I don't see at all. The doctors give me a medical report to say I'll never see anymore. So I'm tired of this. HIV is disappearing, Daddy. I thank God of measure one. I give you praise. I give you glory. Oh, yeah. I feel the pain is going. I couldn't uh, stop. I've never run for a long time. You've never run? I've never run. You've never run? My name is Florence Matorofa. Originally, I'm from Zimbabwe, but I'm working here in Pretoria, South Africa. Previously, I used to be a Christian going to another church and I used to hear about Prophet Shepard Bushiri but apparently I'm where I grew up or the church that I used to grow up in it was not a prophetic or a Pentecostal church so I never used to believe about prophets or anything so basically my life when I grew up the church I used to go to, uh, there are some things that I could also do even if I'm going to church, like we could cl go clubbing, drink, and so forth. So uh, when I used to hear about the prophetic churches, I used to think that uh, it's all a lie and so forth, and believing with all sorts of things that people say about uh, the prophetic churches. So in 2016, June, I had visited in Limpopo and when I went to Limpopo to visit that is whereby I just came by prophetic channel so when I was looking at the prophetic channel and then when I was now seeing prophetic channel and then I said oh let me just see what is this what is this all about and when I was hearing the the man of God prophet Shabbat Bushiri uh, preaching and also prophesying to other people on the channel that is when I, I started, it started to sink in my mind that something is really happening at this church. So when I now uh, kept on listening to the prophetic channel, that the service which I was uh, listening to in June 2016, I was now wondering like, where is this? And then that's when I remember that the people I was with, they told me that, ah, but then where you are staying in Pretoria, that is where the church is said to be. So when I came back to Pretoria, I was now eager to say, ah, but that church that I, 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 I saw on TV, on Prophetic Channel, I really want to really see whatever that I saw on Prophetic Channel and see how it can change my life. Because initially, on my own part, I wanted change. And from what I'd seen on Prophetic Channel, I also wanted my life to change. Thereby, uh, I have two sons, and my bigger son, I sent him to ECG Pretoria Showground, and I said, go to the showground and buy me the anointing oil. And by then it was Lion of Judah anointing oil. And then I told him that I saw the, the, the man of God who was on TV, uh, uh, people were testifying about this Lion of Judah. Go and buy me a wristband from that church and the anointing oil. So being a child, when he went to, to ECG, he went and bought the wristband for me. But he didn't buy Lion of Judah as I had instructed. He bought me favor oil. And then when I got that favor oil, I was telling myself, okay, I want to administer this oil. I want to really see if really this anointing oil is going to, to work for me. And if it's going to change my life like I had seen on Prophetic Channel. 
So I took that wristband and I was wearing that wristband. And apparently I'm a teacher. And where I am teaching is like I was doing my job, but then I was not even getting recognition of my job or anything. So I think I used the anointing oil and was wearing that wristband for about two weeks. And then there were supposed to be competitions that I was supposed to be entering. And these competitions, we used to have them um, every year. Two weeks after I started ad administering the, the favor oil and also wearing the wristband. And I was telling myself, as I was anointing myself and praying, just as I was seeing on Prophetic Channel, I also want to see a change in my life. If really Major One is a true prophet, God, I want to see a sign. And I was saying Major One should show me a sign that for real in ECG there is God. So when I was anointing that, and then I was also anointing myself whenever I go to work, and I say whatever that I'm teaching my children, they are supposed to understand. And those competitions that I'm going to go through, I want to see results. So when I went to the competitions, there were 30 schools which were participating in the district competitions. It was an Olympiad for Economics and Management Science, the subject that I teach. <sighs> So when the children were writing and so forth, and the competitions went, went on, at the end of the day, when the competitions finished, I was uh, told that I was a district winner. I, was, I became number one in the district for teaching that particular subject in 2016. It came as a shock to me. And it's so, it, when I, I was like, really? It has never happened to me before, and all these other teachers were there. You know, I was now like, I really, and before the competition, I, I kept, I was even having the anointing all in my bag, and I was even anointing myself and declaring, just like I, like I was seeing on Prophetic Channel, because I never stopped watching Prophetic Channel. I kept on watching Prophetic Channel, although I was not yet going to church, to ECG. That's when I re realized, like, no, there is really something. It has never happened all, all the time that I've taught in South Africa. I started to teach in South Africa from 2011 and I had nothing to show to, or recognized to say that I'm teaching or doing a good job or something. But then it was only after that that I was able to be recognized. When I won that uh, number one in the Gauteng province, it was a turning point. And then now I told myself, no, I really think I should go to the showground and see that man of God because no, something is there at that church. Because me, when I was buying those uh, anointing materials, I wanted to see, I wanted the sign and I was even praying to say, God, if it's really there, whatever that I see on TV, I also want it to happen to me. So when it happened to me, that was a turning point. I started coming to the services on Sunday. Sundays I used to make it sure I make sure that I come to church. And if it's all week, midweek uh, I could not come, I would also make sure that I watch it on Prophetic Channel. I realized that the more I came to church, my life began to, to change. Even that those that behavior that I used to do, like clubbing, drinking, it was now getting out of me. And then I started to realize that whatever that I was touching like when I go, when I do my work and, and so forth, it was now bringing results. Like when I go to a competition, even at work, now I was now re, uh, recognized. Even my school was now being recognized because of the awards that I was now winning. So I kept on coming to church and I was like, the reason why I'm going to keep on coming to church because I'm seeing my life changing. And I know that my life is going to change for the better because the life that I was living, I did not like it. I wanted to, to live a better life. On this particular day, I went to work. It was a Monday. So somehow they called me to say I'm supposed to go for a workshop at work. When I'm going down the steps, that's when I fell. I don't know what happened. Something just, it just happened. Or, I just fell from the steps, like eight steps down. And when I fell, 
I hit and I was hitting my legs and so forth. And I, I broke my left arm on the shoulder here. My hand, it was, not, it was not moving and I could not even lift it. It was in pain, I was in pain. Upon arriving at the hospital, uh, they had to do an X-ray. And when they did the X-ray, that's when they found out that uh, my hand was broken. I had brought my humerus, the mid shaft here. Yeah, it was broken. They they now told me that you know what we are we are supposed to go for we are supposed to book you for an operation, and we are only going to be transferred to Steve Biko Academic Hospital because the way your hand is broken, the injury it's 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 terrible. There is no way you are going to be able to to recover. So it was a Monday, and then I was like. So it means I'm supposed to be in the hospital. And I was telling them that, you know what, I'm having two children who I stay with. I only stay with my kids. And my, my children, my first one was, is in high school and my other son is in crash. So I was like, now they don't even have someone. But then at the back of the mind, my mind, I started declaring, I said, no. This thing is an attack. So I kept on uh, praying. And even there, when I'm there, I'm administering myself the, um, the Lion of Judah and my water. I was in pain. And, the, and then when they were now trying to, to make arrangements for me to be transferred to go to Steve Biko, um, me, when I'm sitting there, I'm declaring, I'm canceling the operation, I'm saying no. This is an attack. I want to go. I want to make sure that I go to church and prophet is going to pray for me. Because how can it be that when I'm supposed to go for my international visitors, this thing happened? So, and then that's when they were telling me that apparently there was no, they could not find space for me at Steve Biko. There was no bed. So it meant that I was just going to stay in the hospital until they they find an, a bed for me so that I can go for operation for surgery at Steve Biko. And then I asked them, is it possible for me to go home? And then when they have the bed, they can call me because I also had to make arrangements for my children because my children were alone. They discharged me around eight in the evening. They just, they said they're going to put for me a used lab. It was um, like a cast which they put at the back here and also here in front. And then I was supposed to just keep my hand at 90 de degrees like this so that they can uh, protect it because my hand was broken here. So there was no coordination between my shoulder and also this other part. So they were just going to put it until I get a bed at Tiv Biko so that I can go for the operation where they were saying they are going to put pins and those pins were going to make my bones to, to go back together. And also because of my age, they were also telling me that it's very difficult for when you're above 30 years for your bones to, to join like, or to heal fast because of my age. When I was home, I kept on, I was taking my prayer petitions and I was praying and I was declaring and I was anointing myself. So although they, uh, they put that, uh, those, that, that cast to protect my hand so that it doesn't move, and not uh, injure myself more. I was opening it like this and I was pouring, anointing all inside and I was drinking. I was doing everything. I realized that a lot of things was happening and I was not able to now, like because of that, I was not able to move my hand or do anything for myself. I had to look for someone to help me because I could not even bath myself. When I'm washing, I like someone needs to help. Even in the first first month, I could not even stand from the couch alone because I could not balance. And my my bed is high. I could not I could not climb on the bed. I could not sleep. I had to sleep like sitting and like like putting like cushions here so that my hand cannot move. So at work, I was no longer going to work because I, I had to take a sick leave because there was no way I was able to work like that. I was in pain. Even when I'm coming to church, they had to help me to dress up and so forth. I was not even able to move my hands. Even when I want to go to the bathroom, 
even when I come to church, I used to even, even I'm sitting in the sick bay, I used to even call my cousin to say, oh, I'm sending a message in church. I say, can can you come and fetch me so that we can go to the toilets there and she can help me undress and use the bathroom because I was not able to undress myself and also put on my clothes. My name is Zoliwe, originally from Zimbabwe, but I stay in Kempton Park. The time she was supposed to go for international visitors, she had uh, an attack. That is when she fell and she broke her hand. It was a challenge for her because she couldn't uh, do much things on her own until I had to move from Kempton Park to come and stay here with her in Pretoria. So we're just encouraging each other, praying, using prayer petitions, coming to church every Sunday. Even me, I was uh, an IVP. She was also coming and she was going to the sick bay. So sometimes even in the international visitors program, she would text me a message and say she wants to go to the toilet because it was a challenge for her to, to go to the bathroom alone. So I would come out and then I would take her to the bathroom and then help her and then I'll go back to my seat and she'll back, go back to her seat. Normally I don't go to diplomatic service. I watch it on the TV. Because of the condition, my condition I was having, when it's cold, the bone was, it became painful. So to go to the services at night, it was, it was painful for me. And I would say, yo, the cold, now these days it's very cold and so forth. But the Sunday services, I was able to go. But then that very week, I was, when I was sleeping, I dreamt and I even told my, my cousin sister that, you know what, I dreamt Papa healing me, d delivering me something is going to happen and papa is always saying that when you don't go to church that sunday or that day that's when you are supposed to be picked up on sunday we came to church we went to church and then on monday i said let's go to the diplomatic service in my spirit i was just saying i should just go to church because of what we also saw on sunday when the holy spirit was moving in the place we just, I just thought, because of this month of the Holy Spirit, something is going to happen. On Monday, we were in the service. So when we were in the service and Papa was preaching, and Papa, when Papa declared healing, I, I, I could feel the anointing moving. But the Papa was in the main hall there. And in my spirit, I was saying, I want Papa to echo look at me and I want the healing power that Papa was declaring to come to me. And I kept on praying that I am receiving and today I'm receiving my healing. So at first, I could feel like, I, I felt something like something moving in me. I felt like I was feeling hot. I could feel the heat in my, in my, in my bones. Papa kept on de declaring healing and said, uh, something, somebody is getting healed, healing power is moving, something is happening, and I, I felt it, like moving, like I was shivering, now it was, I was hot and shivering. There's healing happening in the atmosphere. I'm telling you, there's healing happening in the atmosphere. HIV is melting as if in terror. There's so much presence, so much power, where you are standing right now. Madness is coming out. Depression disappearing in the praises of Almighty. His name is Jehovah. Yes, behold, behold. All over like me, I was now in like, like, I'm feeling cold, I'm shivering, but there is heat on my hand. So I was like, when he says healing power and I'm receiving, I said, let me try to move my hand like this. Huh. I say I'm moving my hand. And before I was not even able to lift or, 
or even even when papa was praying and they said raise up your hands oh this one was like this i'll just do like this and i was like like this huh, i'm doing like this i'm able to to move my hands i was like something is happening to me is this really happening to me i really i was so excited and couldn't believe it that you know god the god which is who is in ecg was moving when I, when i was sitting in the in the escort bay i just started feeling the anointing and then i went i sat down i didn't realize that healing power is taking place also on my sister's side where she was sitting in the sick bay so one of the ladies was beside me she just waited and then she when i was calm and she said your sister is there your sister is rising up so i stood up there and i ran to the front and i waited by the side because i wanted to see it with my own eyes i saw her moving i saw her oh god i saw it was so beautiful i couldn't believe it as I, i was you know the holy spirit was moving you know when you see someone who can't who has not been moving doing a lot of things it has been a challenge for her with the kids alone you know it was when you see a change taking place it was it was it was out of this world it was out of this world the anointing was too much and she started moving i i i was overwhelmed i was overwhelmed and i thank the god of major one what happened there's healing happening in atmosphere i'm telling you there's healing happening in that atmosphere hiv is noting as if in terror there's so much presence so much power where you are standing right now madness is coming out depression disappearing in the praises of almighty his name is jehovah there was a man who was interviewing me said like, what's happening and then they were trying to explaining to papa like this lady says that she was not able to move her hands now she's able healing power is healing is taking place and i was telling him you know what i was not able to move my hands i was not able to do these things papa now says give the lady them the, the the my glitter say what is happening and i told papa papa you know what i was supposed to come for international visitors and the day that i booked for my international visitors to register two hours after i register for my international visitors program that's when i fell and broke my hand and i could not come for international visitors program on the 29th of, of april I was at work and then when I was at work I was calling to register for international visitors and then 2 hours after I registered I fell on the steps at work and I was not able to come for international visitors and they and, said and, and God I just touch you now Yes papa I was not even able to move my hand You're going to do that Yes papa Papa says bring her here let me have your international visitors now Hey People of God, I was so excited. I was not having my own international visitors on a Monday. <laughs> It was so nice. Come over here. Let's have your international visitors right now. Behold. Behold. Uh, I could feel favored. Uh, Papa prayed for me and uh, uh, stepped on my feet. I fell down. He says that they should lift me up. After they lift me up, he says it is done. From that day on, I stopped wearing that. I'm, I'm bent. I'm slim, which I was supposed that of orthopedic fit. I'm slim.
from when I left the church, I came home. Ah, I was not even wearing that arm sling anymore. I woke up, still, I see my hand is, I'm able to move my hand. On Wednesday, the 17th of July, I went to, to, to an hospital where I first get gone for when I, when I was, when I was injured. When I got there, ah, uh, the lady there, I told her, she says, what can I do for you? I said, oh, you know what, I'm waiting for operation. But then I am healed. Today I'm going back home without this, these things they put to protect my hand because I was healed. The doctor who had attended me at first when I was injured saw me and she was like, don't I know you? And I was like, yes, you know me. And then she's like, okay, and then what's happening? And I was telling her, you know what? I am healed this end. My prophet prayed for me, I am healed. I'm no longer feeling any pain. And then she was laughing, you know. You know, uh, the prophetic way of understanding and also scientific way of understanding is not the same. She says, okay, we can only be able to, to understand you if you do an extra. I said, fine. You can do another, me another x-ray because on the 4th of July, they had done me an x-ray. So, you know, they would think that you're just wasting their time. I said, no, do me another x-ray. I had the x-ray. When, when I had the x-ray, surprisingly, when they look at the x-ray, they were now surprised. They say, ah, how did, and then now, how is this possible? Because now when they look at the x-ray now, it's like there, is a, there was a growth, the bone grew. There was a growth of the, the bone grew. And then I was like, this is prophetic. My, my prophet, Prophet Shepard Bushiri prayed for me. This is prophetic, you cannot understand it. She says, there is a, this, is, this bone is, is, has grown. And where the bone grew, ne, it's where they were like supposed to put the, those pins I'm supposed to go for, for operation and put. That's where the, the bone grew. There was even the shadow on the x-ray to show what is happening. She went with me in the room for the x-ray. She showed me the x-ray and then I was even smiling. Because even with my cousin, I was with my cousin there. We knew even if they were uh, making us go up and down and so forth, we were just knowing because the man of God declared healing and I received the healing. There is no way I was going to go back with that with those bandages on my hands. Because I could move. I was even telling her that, you know, on the day that I was injured, how this hand was. And she was like, yes, I know. And from when I look at you now, and from the way you were, it's totally different. And then she said, you know what? From what is coming from the x-ray, there is no way I can keep on you having those things. Let me remove them. And when you're dead for, for operation comes in August, I don't even think they're going to go on with the operation because now your bone is sealed, is sealing itself. And then they, she took off the bandages from me and took off everything. And then I was so happy, we were excited, we were glorifying the Lord. We were saying, God of Major One has done it for me again. Um, and I was so happy and I came home even now. I am happy, my, my, my hands, I can move them. I can even wear my clothes alone. I can move around things, you know, it's so exciting. I can now bath myself. You know, it's, it's something which is, uh, it takes away your self-esteem, you know, like you cannot wash yourself and somebody has to do it for you, you know. It kind of takes away your self-esteem. But God of Major One restored it for me. It, being a revival, I'm revived, I'm restored, and I'm so happy. And I will keep on glorifying the God of Major One.